Hi, I'm Charles Lawson and you're watching Mind to Market Media. Today I'll be doing a short tutorial on how to use gemstone tweezers. This will be part one of a two-part series where I'll be going over the two main tools that we use in the field as a gemologist, which are the gemstone tweezers, also known as gemstone tongs, and also the jeweler's 10 times loop. So keep an eye out for that second video. So, why is it important to use gemstone tweezers? One of the main reasons is the fact that when you're using tweezers like this, you're going to be able to perform much more fine, much more dexterous movements than you would by just using your fingers. So if you're sorting stones, you might be lining them up in a tray, you might be making them into some kind of design, you really want to be able to move those stones and not drop them, not ping them across the room, you want to be able to do that quite quickly and efficiently. It's also important for when you're using equipment like a microscope or a jeweler's loop. You want to be able to hold the stone, not get your fingerprints on it, and be able to manipulate the stone without too much trouble. The second reason, and this is probably quite obvious, is the fact that when you're holding a gemstone with tweezers, you're avoiding getting your fingerprints on the stone. Now, this is important for when you're viewing the stone under magnification. You want to have the best view into the stone as you possibly can, and having fingerprints on that can impede how you see into the stone. It's also just important in general for if you're dealing with clients, you don't want to have gemstones with fingerprints all over them. You want them to be looking their absolute best. So handling them with tweezers like we have here is going to make it much more easy to keep them clean when you're showing them to clients and just in general. So you can probably see I have in front of me here three different types of tweezers. I would say that these are probably the most common styles that you'll see in gemology, but you know, there may be a few other variations out there. Now we'll start off the ones that I don't use as much. Uh, this would be just the absolute standard, normal gemstone tweezers. Basically no different to any other kind of tweezers that you know, are in the same sort of genre, it's the same sort of size. It's basically just a flat tip at the end. This one has some knurling on it. Uh, and yeah, just completely standard tweezers. One of the reasons why I don't use these as much is for one, to keep them closed, you do actually have to not lose that little tip that goes over the end. That can be a bit of a pain sometimes, because if you don't have that, you know, they can kind of bend out. You know, it's just a bit annoying when you don't have them be able to stay closed like that. Uh, I also like to be able to have a lock on them, which is why these two tweezers here are what we call locking tweezers. And this is my preferred style. So with these types of tweezers, when you open them, you pull that little sliding lock back, the tweezers open, and then you push it and they'll stay closed. So that's good for travel, but also good for when you're holding stones, it means you can lock the stone in place, and this can make it just a little bit more easy when you're using the stones with something like a microscope perhaps, or if you even want to try handing the stone to another person, you can lock the tweezers and then hand it, and it will be more secure when you hand it to them. But this is a little tricky and you do want to be a bit careful with that kind of thing and make sure that the person you're handing it to has some idea how to use the tweezers. And you know, it can be a little bit sketchy at times, but it is an advantage when you're confident that the person will be able to accept the stone and not ping it across the room. So we'll put these ones aside for a moment and I'll just show you this pair here. So this pair are a little bit different. They do still have the locking mechanism on the top there except these ones have quite a wide, large tip. Now this is like a rubberized tip. These ones are good for when you're handling soft material like uh, perhaps a pearl or amber, something that might be scratched by a stainless steel tip that we have on the regular tweezers. So these are good for soft stones. They're also good for rough. They've got that big, big ending on there. So that means that you can hold larger pieces and the rubberized tip means you get a good grip on the piece as well. So these are also quite good for beginners because they've got that nice big tip on there. It's gonna be quite difficult to drop a stone when you're using like this compared to using something where you have quite a fine tip on the end. So these are great for beginners, great for rough, and also great for soft materials like pearls or amber where you don't want to scratch them. So we come to my favorite pair of tweezers. Now these ones are good because they have the lock, but what is also good is the fact that they have knurling on the inside here. So this is just this little cross hatching that you can see going along the tip there. And that knurling basically creates grip that will hang on to the gemstone. What takes it one step further is that we also have this small groove cut into the tip on both sides. Now what this groove is for is to hold the girdle of the stone. That's the, the thin edge that runs around the outside. So when you're picking it up, it can actually lock into those little grooves. This won't work with all gems because sometimes the girdle will be too wide and it won't fit in there. But that's why the knurling also comes in handy because if it's too wide to fit into that small groove, at least you have the knurling also on the tips just to give it that little bit of extra grip. 
So with these ones, with those three factors, that would be why I would say this style of gemstone tweezer would be my style of choice. Okay, so how do we use the gemstone tweezers? First of all, we need to know how to hold them. For me, I like to hold it between my thumb and my forefinger. You can also use your middle finger, and I generally like to use the other fingers more just as a you know, stabilizing factor rather than really holding onto it. So I have it between my thumb and my forefinger here. I have the lock just underneath my thumb. This allows me to open and close it as I like. And I will have the base of the tweezers sitting just on the fleshy part of the outside of my palm. Now, this basically gives you a really stable way to hold it. You can see there, you know, it's all very rigid. It's going to be a nice, easy way to hold it without bumping it, without having your hand shaking. You know, this is going to be by far the best way to hold it. You don't really want to be holding it too far at the end. You don't really want to be holding it right up the very top. Essentially, you want that nice, stable grip with your thumb and your forefinger. These ones giving you a bit more stability and just touching the base of your palm there, touching where that little fleshy bit is. Now, this is also a somewhat personal preference. If you find it more comfortable holding it a slightly different way, that's also fine. But this is, in general, a good way to hold your tweezers. Now, when it comes to using them with a loop, as we'll discuss later, you will actually be holding it a bit further down, and this allows you to line up the loop a little bit better, but we'll get onto that in the next video. Now that we know how to hold the tweezers, the next step is to pick up the stone. But first, you probably want to clean the stone, as often when you're using tweezers, it's probably going to be because you want to view the stone under a loop or under some kind of magnification or potentially hand it to a client. So you want the stone looking its best. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean the stone. Now that I've cleaned the stone, I'm going to flip it over onto its table. So that's the flat side of the stone with the pointy side pointing up. And I'm going to try and grab the stone on the girdle, which is that rim that runs around the edge. Now, hopefully I can get it to sit in the knurling, uh, but this one is a little bit large, so we'll see how we go. But I'm gonna take the tweezers, and because this piece is a little bit larger, it's actually wider than the width of my tweezers when they're just at rest like this. So to pick this one up, I'll actually put my finger inside, and that will open up the tweezers to be able to get them around the girdle of the stone. This might be necessary if you have like a long stone, you might have a long emerald cut or a long pear cut or something where you, know, you actually wanna hold the stone lengthways, you don't wanna hold it down the sides, and then again, you, know, you might wanna open up your tweezers to do that. So if the stone is small, like this one here, it will fit around the girdle, that's fine. But because the stone is larger, I'm gonna open it up. Now I've left it in the cloth here because what they can do is actually allow me a bit more maneuverability to actually pick up the stone and actually get the tweezers kind of past a point that they would not be able to get to if it wasn't a hard surface. This also means that if you want to, you can actually hold the stone inside your cloth, which allows you to kind of maneuver it and get it into a nice position that you might not be able to do when it's not in the cloth, because otherwise you'd be getting it dirty with your fingers. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to try and grab the stone at the tip of the pear and at the base of the pear. And basically this means that I can hold the stone and it's going to be actually getting into those little grooves, those little notches that we have there. And I can get lots of light into the stone. The tweezers aren't coming around the sides too much. Now this is quite a stable way to hold a pear cup, but you could also hold it on the sides. What you can also do is if you need to inspect the whole girdle of the stone is instead of having it like this, where you've got it point to point or having it on the sides, you may also want to pick it up with the culet and the table being held by the tweezers like this. In this case, I'm simply going to position the tweezers underneath, close, and now I've got a good view of the entire girdle. Now you might be wanting to check the girdle for chips or you might have a laser inscription on the girdle. So this is a great way to be able to hold the stone and actually be able to see the entire outline the entire edge of the piece. But for today, we'll hold it on the side. This time I'm gonna pick it up on these edges here. Now, I'm gonna lock the tweezers like this. And as you can see, the stone is now stable and held within the tweezers. As mentioned, this does take a little bit of practice and you probably don't want to be doing this straight away from the beginning. You want to be keeping you know, a good bit of pressure on there and not relying just on those locks. You also want to be careful that if you do use the lock, don't press too hard on it because forcing it shut like that because you think it needs to be tight, this can often cause the stone to spring out and just ping across the room. So when you're opening and closing that lock, just give it you know, just enough pressure just to be able to hold the stone securely. Not so much that you're gonna just go act like a little catapult and just spring it across the room. 
Now I will note that there is another way that you can hold your tweezers, but this is generally a little bit frowned upon and not used so much within the industry, but it is good to know. So normally you would be holding it as I've described, like so, but you can also spin them around and hold them a bit like chopsticks. Now there's only really one situation where I would hold the stones like this, and this is basically when I might be arranging the stones and I want to be able to move them within a stone tray, where it's going to be quite difficult to actually get the tweezers in and get them on either side of the piece because you've got basically the ridges of the tray getting in the way. So it can be a little bit fiddly, you might slip the stone out, not so good. However, when you have your tweezers like this, it means you can actually get onto the sides and you can start to rearrange with quite a lot of freedom. It's not going to be too difficult to actually get the tweezers on either side of the stone and move them around. You might still need to get your middle finger in there or just pry them apart a little bit just to get on the sides of larger stones like this one. But generally, this is quite a good way to be able to move stones around and not actually have to worry about trying to get past the sides of your gemstone tray because you're just bypassing that and going straight over the top. And there you have it. You now know how to use gemstone tweezers. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it easy to understand. If you do have any further questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, that always helps us out. Otherwise, I hope to see you for the next video on how to use the 10x Jewelers Loop. But as always, I hope you guys are doing great and we'll see you next time.